And we're back with some more Atlanta Thrashers franchise mode in FHM 7. And in this one, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the last episode because I want to do a send-off season with your Atlanta Thrashers. That means we're just going to go quickly, I mean very quickly, through all of your number 10. That includes the playoffs in this video. Then we're going to wrap it up with some stats, uh, the history of this team, and uh, then that'll be all she wrote for the Atlanta Thrashers in this series. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go and sign in any players that I want to re-sign. But besides that, uh, there's not going to be too much stopping in this episode. It's just going to be quick, right to the playoffs sort of deal. I just wanted to give this team one last chance to win the Stanley Cup. Because obviously, we made it to the third round two years in a row now. Uh, we won the Stanley Cup three years ago. So that being said, I am going to re-sign all the players who, that need re-signing. And I'll see you guys in a minute. And the awards, the Ted Lindsay Award goes to Nicholas Backstrom, as does the Art Ross. Maurice Richard goes to Jerome McGinley. The Bloody Bing goes to David DeHarnay. The Bill Masterton goes to Scott Niedermeyer. The Messier Leadership Award goes to Alfredson. The Jennings Trophy goes to Vokun. The Hart goes to Backstrom. The Conn Smythe goes to Howard. The Calder goes to John Tavares on Tampa in this universe. The Norris goes to Jay Bomeister. The Selkie goes to Pavelski. The Vesna goes to Anderson. The GM of the Year goes to Jim Rutherford. And the Jack Adams goes to Don Sweeney. So Nicholas Cronwall is available in free agency. And he has a 65 grade, which I can only guess is mostly from his uh, defensive grades. So I think I'm going to offer Cronwall here because if we take a look at our defensive core real quick, I, I would like to get another a solid top four defenseman in here because at the moment we only have Boyle, Pitkinen, Viznovsky, Ludman, Phillips, and Salmola. And I don't exactly want Salmola playing too often. So I think we're going to go after Cronwall because, I mean, once again, this is our last chance. So we may as well. As far as forwards go, though, I think we're good to go. And I will not only meet his demand, but I will actually, just to ensure that we get him, and besides, we have a lot of salary cap available, I'm going to give him one mil more than what he's asking for per year. <laughs> just to ensure. Because I would really rather not lose out on someone like Cronwall. And there it is. Nicholas Cronwall is a day one signing for your Atlanta Thrashers. So he's on the team now. I believe we are... Honestly, set going into next season. We have Boyle, we have Cronwall, Viznovsky, Pitkinen, Ludman, Phillips, and Salma as the seventh. Then at forward, you have Stahl, Kovalchuk, Korpakoski, Oshie, Franzen, McKenzie, Nash, Peltonen, Higgins, Grabner, White, Christensen, Knubel, and Vasacek. Going into the draft now, we'll pick until human. And I mean, we have a first, but after that, I think we're just going to skip the rest of our picks because the later rounds in this game really are not. Great. So I'm just going to quickly skim through all the top players here, and I'll just take whoever I think looks the best. Yeah, I think Toffoli's the best on this list. So, Toffoli, welcome to the Atlanta Thrashers. And that being said, I'm going to simulate the rest of the draft. <laughs> wow, Buffalo. I, mean, I just don't know what to say. Buffalo has placed Jonathan Quick on waivers. Four and a half star ability. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, we're in the last year of the GM mode anyway, so we may as well have some fun. <laughs> our injury luck continues. Our, our bad, absolutely terrible injury luck from last year continues. Broken kneecap for Eric Stahl. Indefinite. He's not coming back this season. <laughs> Out for six months. That is the entire season. Up until the playoffs. Someone's playing a joke on me. I'm convinced. <laughs> Nicholas Cronwell out for one to two months with a fractured rib. It just never ends. It just never ends with this team. Ludman now out for one to two months with a coccyx fracture. <laughs> I mean, TJ Oshi with a dislocated finger. It says day to day, but that 1% says otherwise. Oh my goodness. And you know what? Once again, just for fun, let's make the trade that we couldn't make last season. And now it seems like a good as, time as any to do it, considering we're without our number one center. We're going to try to acquire Joe Thornton once again. And this time, we're going to be trading Jonathan Quick because he has not uh, really been impressing me. Especially, He's only played 15 games, only had a 905 save percentage. So we may as well flip him for something that we desperately need. And that would be another number one center. So offer trade. And there it is. 
The Boston Bruins have accepted our offer for Jonathan Quick in exchange for Joe Thornton with 50% of his salary retained. Complete trade. So there it is. We now have yet another number one center in our lineup. And there you go. We have finished the season 52, 25, and 5 first in our division. So now we'll take a look at the stats quickly, and then we'll go through the playoffs. So Kovalchuk leads the team with 74 points. 74 points for Thornton. And how many on our team? He had 32 points on our team in 29 games. Very nice. Oshie with 70 points. Picking in with 58 Everything looking pretty solid. And in goal, you have Niemi with a 925 save percentage. Definitely much better than what Quick had. And Pavlich in three games has a 904. And after two games, Eric Stahl is finally back in the lineup. So uh, he was out for basically the entire regular season. But we are certainly glad to have him back in. And uh, I think I want him to separate him and Thornton. But it appears Coach doesn't want to do that. So that's fine too. So we'll just go with whatever he's saying. Not like we have much of a choice anyway. And we are currently up in the Series 3-1. Let's see what happens in this game here. We have a 4-1 to win. We are off to this second round. And Series against the Calgary Flames. What will happen here? We have a 6-3 loss in game number 1. Game number 2, we have a 4-1 loss. Come on, boys. Game number 3, a 3-1 loss. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Not like this. Come on, coach. Switch up the lines a little bit. There you go. Stahl and Thornton are on separate lines now. So, hopefully, uh, that'll make a difference and I don't know why Pavlich is playing as opposed to Niemi but hopefully coach fixes that by the time the game starts so here we go game number four will we be swept or will we live to fight another day we will be swept <laughs> by the Calgary Flames that's unfortunate though it looks like the possible dynasty era has come to a close we have lost in the playoffs three years in a row now. We lost in the third round, then the third round, and now the second round. So we are clearly a team on the decline. <laughs> but no, seriously, we we have quite a future ahead of us, especially with guys like Eric Stahl, uh, Antony Emi, Oshie, Kovalchuk. They're all still in their mid-20s, so this team still has a long time to be competitive if, if it's built right by whoever the next GM is. But for us, that is just about it. So now let's take a look at all the final stats of the franchise, Ilya Kovalchuk with 779 points in 762 games, 314 goals. Incredible. Uh, Eric Stahl in 510 games. Of course, he, <laughs> I think he finished with 505 last season. So he played a total of five games this year in the regular season. Unfortunate. But nonetheless, he was phenomenal for us throughout the entirety of this GM mode. Uh, Rick Nash in third with 438 points in 631 games. Uh, Yanni Pikkinen, uh, once again, a key part of our defensive core uh, pretty much ever since he joined. Really, he had an immediate impact, and that was that was key for us in becoming a better team. Peltonen, he was, once again, just solid all around for his entire career. Even into his late 30s, as a 37-year-old, he was... Uh, oh, I mean, this year was the first year where he really had a down year as far as his grade goes. And and point production dropped a little bit too. But for the most part, he was really good for us. TJ Oshie, 350 points in 413 games. Easily a big part of the future of the Atlanta Thrashers. Of course, Ray Ferraro, who uh, left our team in 2004 to retirement, I believe. And I forgot to mention, Francis Akabale had actually retired uh, prior to the start of this season. So... Uh, he stayed with us for almost the entire GM mode. He was certainly a trooper. And this man, our coach, Craig Guest, 521 games played and, and 303 wins. He had a championship under his belt. So uh, just a, a great hire all around. Our, our, and of course, our former coach, Nathan Layler, from 2001 to 2004. He, he got us started. He certainly got us started. But he was not near anywhere near the coach that Craig Guest was for us. Let's take a look at game records. Kovalchuk had the most goals in a game with four, the most assists in the game with five as well a year later. Eric Stahl with the most points in a game with six. Andre Pavlich with the most saves on February 2nd, 2010 with 64 saves in one game. Dan Boyle at one point in the beginning of the 2009 season had 47 shifts in a game. Can only imagine that was that went quite a long way that went overtime that probably went overtime and he was probably out there more often than not I would have to say and now let's get just a brief overview of the franchise in general so goals against average leaders Tim Thomas up there with a 2.22 wins leaders Antti Niemi has 120 and then Posse Nermanen who could forget this guy with 103 he was solid for us for a few years in our first uh, few years of the GM mode 
but eventually we needed to move on from him because he just, you know, there were better options at that point. Save percentage leaders, Nerman ends up there as well as Thomas. And as far as the team goes, we've made the playoffs six years in a row. Of course, we've only won the championship one of those times, but still nonetheless, uh, definitely a successful GM mode, I would say. And to close out this GM mode, there is one final thing that I want to do. And I'm hoping I can actually do it because considering both these players are still active, but I want to try to retire the numbers of Eric Stahl, number 11, and number 17, Ilya Kovalchuk. So we're going to see if we can do that now. So it looks like we can. So Eric Stahl, number 11, add. <laughs> so now let's do Kovalchuk, number 17, boom. And there it is. That looks beautiful. Uniform retirements for the Atlanta Thrashers. Eric Stahl and Ilya Kovalchuk officially have their numbers hanging in the rafters of the Phillips Arena. I believe that's what it's called anyway. That being said, I'll end this one off here. And I hope you guys enjoyed this series. And I'll see you guys in the next one.